a meeting of the Millican Board of Trustees for February 14th, 2024 to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you. Will the town clerk please call roll? Trustee Beckman. Here. Trustee Dean. Here. Trustee Lane. Here. Trustee Meisner. Here. Trustee Wakeman. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich. Here. Mayor Austin. Here. Thank you. Uh, on the agenda, I want to move the election item off of the consent agenda and move it to the last item on the action agenda. Does anybody have any other adjustments to the agenda tonight? Ms. Mayor, the, uh, as I was reading through the uh, after prom party, I didn't see a number in that resolution. There was a blank in there. Do you want to move it off or do you want to just, we had agreed to $3,000. How much? 3000 Which one? Is that after prom? I think resolution didn't have a memo said a thousand. Oh, there was not a dollar amount because it's a we uh, provided the information from the school on the back of that. Um, it was a flyer and oh, I, saw the I wasn't going to choose an amount for you. But Pardon? we were not staff was not going to choose an amount that the board well, might that was my point though, if we're going to approve it, we need to probably at least mm -hmm. discuss it. Sure. Then okay, we can then move that move to that the off the consent agenda as well. Mm -hmm. We'll move that to after the election approval. Yeah. So we will have nothing on the consent agenda. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Got you Any other adjustments to the agenda? I'll take a motion. I move we approve the agenda as corrected. Second. Yes. Town clerk, please call for a vote. Trustee Dean. Yes. Trustee Lane. Yes. Trustee Meisner. Yes. Trustee Wakeman. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich. Yes. Mayor Austin. Yes. Trustee Thank Beckman. You. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Potion <Blank>. carries. <laughs> Are there any citizens' comments? Mm -hmm. Citizens' comment is the point in the meeting where the public is invited to address the town board on any items except agenda items for which there is a public hearing. Mm -hmm. Is there any public comment? Hearing none, we'll move on to the meeting minutes. Is there any discussion or comments on the minutes of January 24th, 2024? I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve meeting minutes from January 24th, 2024. Second. Town clerk, please call for a vote. Trustee Lane. Yes. Trustee Meisner. Yes. Trustee Wakeman. Yes. Trustee Beckman. Yes. Trustee Dean. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich. Yes. Mayor Austin. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, town administrator's report. Administrator Powell. Thank you, Mayor. Um, past few weeks, Public Works has been crack sealing the streets and, and certain subdivisions. We've been posting notice of which subdivisions they would be in so that um, the residents would be aware. Um, they've been doing that um, when they aren't out clearing snow. So. Um, they've been busy. And Parks has also been trimming trees around Centennial Lake. Good time of year to trim trees and get things ready for the spring. Um, the, cap, the cape ceiling for the streets is out for bid. The bid opening is on February 26th. Weld County Road 23 and 3 quarters will be going out for bid um, this Friday, February 16th. Uh, Pepper McClanahan and I attended the hearing regarding PDC Chevron um, at the Oil and Gas Energy Department in Greeley on Thursday, January 25th. The hearing officer continued the hearing until Thursday, February 29th. His request was that PDC Chevron meet with Millican staff prior to that hearing on the 29th um, to discuss the haul route. Um, staff will be meeting with them tomorrow at 1.30. We've also invited the county um, and Johnstown and our fire um, district to attend. Um, we will meet at the town hall and we will also be meeting uh, at the conducting a site visit. 
and this is located off of 48 and a half, um, right down from where the Level and Ready Mix um, parcel is. On February 2nd, Pepper and I also attended a meeting with the county and Johnstown to discuss the Level and um, Ready Mix haul route. Um, as you know, this has been uh, quite a concern for everybody involved, whether it be Milliken, Johnstown, or the county. Um, there are three different haul routes um, currently um, going to go before the county commissioners. Um, and that hearing is on February 28th, at, um, located at 1150 O Street. The meeting begins at 10 a.m. according to the Board of County Commissioners calendar. <clears throat> As I indicated, the PDC Chevron hearing is been continued to February 29th at 9.30 a.m. And the location of that is 1402 North 17th Avenue in Greeley. As an update on the CDBG grant, um, tonight in your packet um, is a contract for one of the 13 contractors that submitted a bid. Um, if this contract is approved tonight, the ADA ramp replacement project will commence tomorrow. There are 13 ramps that will be replaced in the older area of Milliken <coughs> so that we come into compliance. So that's what I have. Any questions? Board questions? No uh, questions. I have a question. Trustee Wakeman. Um, on the hall routes, mm -hmm. does the um, state get involved with any of that? CDOT? Yes. Um, so yes, we've reached out to CDOT um, and um, they also will have somebody in attendance um, when we meet out there. Um, they don't give uh, an, uh, whether it's the safest route approval or not. What they're doing is whether the road, since it's a state highway, can handle that. And um, that's what their involvement is. And do they issue any opinion ahead of time or just at the hearing? Um, I don't recall, um, Pepper, I don't believe they issued any opinion on that. Uh, the information that they sent us was that, you know, this is um, up to the county through their development proposal and evaluation. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay, thank you for the update. You're welcome. All right, first item on the action agenda item is a public hearing to consider the application of JDBL Farm LLC to disconnect certain real property from the town of Millican. Presenting is Pepper McClanahan, Community Development Director. Can you open the public? Thank you, Mayor. Hold on, Mayor, can you open the public hearing, please? Oh, I'm sorry. The time is 6.38. We'll open the public hearing. Thank you. Mayor and trustees, uh, the following information was prepared jointly uh, between the town attorney, Matt Gould, and myself. Um, before you tonight is a public hearing to consider a request to disconnect what is commonly known as Flack Farms. Uh, the legal description includes the homestead at Ashton Estate subdivision and the southwest quarter of um, section, we not have that on here, Matt. 33. Section, yeah, section 33. So this is located, let me, there are some maps up there on your dais. The first one is the one colored in yellow. Um, that's the town limits. This is the one that is to the east of uh, the town and was connected along a railroad right of way. This plat was approved or these annexations were approved in 2000 and uh, believe 2007 and the plat for Homestead at Ashton was approved a little bit later. So in consideration, um, the disc 
the, in the context of the disconnect, it means to remove the property from the town. So one of the common terms is de-annexation, but the proper term is disconnect and would return it to Weld County. In November uh, of 2023, uh, board members were mailed a letter from Larry S. Buckendorf on behalf of JDLB Farms LLC, invoking section 31-12-501 of the Colorado Revised Statutes and making application to disconnect certain rural property from the town of Milliken. And then pursuant to that, uh, it does require um, a landowner can apply for an ordinance disconnecting attractive land and adjacent to the boundary of the town. The process is described in 31-12-501 of the statutes but basically summarized it is on receipt, the board of, this imposes the following obligation on the board of trustees. On receipt of such application, the governing body of the municipality shall give due consideration to the disconnection application. And if such governing body is of the opinion that the best interests of the municipalities will not be prejudiced by the disconnection of such track, it shall enact an ordinance affecting such disconnection. Um, Matt, do you want to cover the, the next section, which is the Colorado Revised Statutes? <clears throat> uh, sure, uh, I'm happy to. So this, basically just a few points to highlight about this, uh, this statute. And be aware, we are acting directly under the pertinent statute. We don't have a specific disconnect process in our code. So we have uh, communicated with the applicant's attorney. And I, I'm not aware that we have any disagreement over the basic approach to the, the board's decision. Just a few key points and these come from staff. Uh, disconnection is a legislative action. Uh, uh, there's some mandatory language used in the statute it, so that it appears that the disconnection is mandatory, but that is true only if the board is of the opinion that the best interests of the town will not be prejudiced. The board is required to give due consideration to the application, but there's no detailed set of requirements on how to proceed in the statute. Um, as, as Pepper mentioned, disconnection is available under the statute for attractive land within and adjacent to the boundary of the town. In this case, uh, the applicant was given full notice and an opportunity to participate and the applicant is represented by council tonight. So the applicant will make a presentation and they were also given the opportunity to uh, submit documents and those are provided to the board in the packet uh, they're all combined, I think, in that li last item of uh, list of attachments, developer provided materials. So there were several pages of those materials. In addition, on February 7th, the applicant provided to the staff, uh, after we reviewed the initial legal description, um, both a title commitment showing that the applicant is the owner of the property and an updated legal description for the property, which I think Pepper has accurately described. Thank you, Matt. So staff uh, analysis, through the staff analysis, we've identified the following considerations as potentially pertinent to the board's determination. Number one, the development of the property was previously approved and made a matter of record uh, by the following ways. Uh, August 4th of 2008, there was a development agreement for Homestead at Ashton, which was recorded. Uh, the Homestead at Ashton first filing final plat was recorded in 2008 and the Homestead at Ashton first filing corrected plat was filed in 2014. These items appear to still encumber the property or, and are noted as an exception on page uh, four of schedule B in the title commitment that was provided. In addition, on September 13, 2006, the board by resolution number 6-29 approved the service plan for the Homestead at Ashton, or excuse me, the homes. Homestead Metropolitan District. The service plan is available for download. Um, according to the section I .A, um, IA of the service plan, its purpose was to serve the Homestead at Ashton estate subdivision, Homestead at Ashton subdivision. The service plan includes a list of services to be provided, including sanitary sewer, storm drainage, and water. So again, that was part of the Metropolitan um, district document. Streets were platted in the Homestead at Ashton fi first filing subdivision. 
uh, that have been expected to provide connections for future development of the property currently annexed north and south of the subdivision. That would include that southwest quarter that is being proposed for disconnection. If the area is disconnected, Millican will no longer be able to apply its development standards to the area, and this could pack, impact other parts of town. Disconnection of the southwest quarter will remove a section um, of County Road 378 from Millican. Um, actually, it would remove, yeah, a, a section of 378 from Millican between the municipal limits and 65th Avenue. Millican conducts snow plowing maintenance on this section uh, in conjunction with, uh, and, and goes all the way up north on 65th to the Prairie Heights Middle School. Um, there's a <coughs> kind of a, an agreement between Evans, Weld County, and Millican that whoever gets there first just plows the whole thing, lifts their blade, and turns around. Further, it would require the town maintenance crews to find an alternative turnaround for snow removal equipment where the municipal limits would end uh, near County Road 378, and I'll, I'll demonstrate that on the map. Disconnection of the subdivision as well as all of the southwest quarter of Section 33 will remove portions of county roads or rights away within the town that Millikan's needs for access to develop property currently annexed to the north. The disconnection will create non-contiguous continuous and partial road right-of-ways, most especially on the western edge of, uh, of the Wiest property and where Homestead at Ashton uh, ends. That would have uh, remain a 30 foot strip. You can see it in the green map closest to you, which would not meet any of our road standards for connection or development up to the Weiss property. There's also a section of 378 at the intersection of Two Rivers Parkway that would be affected. Disconnection of the subdivision will also remove open space and trail opportunities that are currently platted in the Homestead at Ashton Estate Homestead at Ashton subdivision, as well as drainage and utility easements that are dedicated in the plat. Disconnection of the platted subdivision, as well as all of the southwest quarter of section 33, will remove the opportunity for the town to add more homes, as well as commercial opportunities in the subdivision along County Road 378 and 65th Avenue. Increases in population and homes, commonly referred to as rooftops, are often used as a metric for commercial businesses looking to locate to communities, which provide sales tax generation to the town, as well as um, access to additional services for Millican residents. The disconnection will also jeopardize access to and development of the recent Weast annexation located north and adjacent to Homestead at Ashton First Island Subdivision. Staff notes that the legal description provided in Exhibit A legal description in the request for disconnection may contain one or more errors, particularly as a request extends to disconnection of all the southwest quarter of section 33 from the town of Millican. There is a sliver in there that we did not annex with the flat property that may need to be adjusted. Staff recommends uh, that verification of the exact property be dis to be disconnected be provided from a surveyor stamped by a licensed professional survey in the state of Colorado. The property proposed for disconnection is within Millican's growth boundary and three mile planning area. And there's a map on your dais that, uh, that demonstrates that. Uh, there's a suggested motion in the staff report. And with that, I will submit it in the exhibits and Matt and I'll be happy to entertain any questions you may have. Unless the town administrator has some additional information. Oh. Okay, at this point, let's go ahead and have Journey Homes present next, and then we'll have uh, staff questions or board questions. Please state your name and address for the record, please. Sure. Um, Larry, you might have to raise that up a little bit. Thanks. That, thanks, Joe. Yeah. Good evening, Madam Mayor. Trustees, my name is Larry Buckendorf. I represent the development entity JDLB Farms Investments LLC. I also have with me this evening uh, Mr. Morgan Kidder, um, who's our project manager. We have David O'Leary and Jacob Holler, who are uh, representing us in the uh, 
legal side of the disconnection process. We are located in Greeley at 7251 West 20th Street, L200. Uh, we have a presentation that Morgan's gonna help me pull up on the screen as we move through this. Madam Mayor, uh, I think it's important and it was adequately pointed out by Mr. Gould and Pepper that the disconnection is a legislative action. In other words, um, it is, was made very clear by Mr. Gould that it's a shall um, action by the town board once an application is made. Given the uh, nuances and particular issues related to our proposal to, to disconnect the property, and I'm gonna to try to lay those out for you this evening. Uh, it's important to know also that this has been a, a very long and protracted process that we've been engaged with to try to determine whether or not this is a, a property that can reasonably be developed given the constraints of Millican's serviceability. As is very clear, the vicinity of Homestead at Ashton is significantly outside of what I would call the town core. It is almost three miles from the town core limits and uh, was flagpole annexed through significant amount of property through a utility, a railroad uh, right of way over county property back in 2006. All of those properties between the town core and the homestead at Ashton property are still within the county. If you can bring up slide number one. <clears throat> While they work on that, it's very similar to the, the yellow shaded map uh, that was presented to the board from the town. As you can see, the, the property lies significantly to the north and east of the town core. There we go, as, as it's shown here, <clears throat> the Ashton property is the green shaded uh, piece of property uh, that gives you some general idea of how far outside of the town limits that it is. The history of the property is significant. The history, uh, the, the property was annexed over uh, almost 15 years ago uh, in 2006. It was done what is commonly known as a flagpole annexation. I don't have any details of why, when, how, what was the thinking back then uh, when Doc Flack owned the piece of property. Um, but that is somewhat important because it sat in the exact same condition since 2006. A service plan was adopted for a metropolitan district. A plat was filed in 2008. And then sometime in 2014, there was a minor plat amendment. I think that's irrelevant uh, to the overall concept. But again, the, the important part being that the property was platted uh, 15 years ago uh, and nothing's happened in the interim. Sometime thereafter, uh, the owner of the property, Doc Flack and his family uh, went on hard times. It was right in the downturn of the market. The property was not uh, developed and eventually went bankrupt at some level and was uh, uh, foreclosed on and taken over by a local bank. We acquired the property in 2016, and for a number of years thereafter, tried to figure out what was the best use of that property. <clears throat> if you'll remember, well, you wouldn't remember, the, the property was platted for large estate lot type development on, san, on um, septic sewer systems with no real plan on how that subdivision would be connected to any type of water service. So there was never any contemplation uh, by the developer and the engineer at that time to connect to the city's sanitary sewer services, even if they were, would have been available at that time, which they weren't. So that's important to know because one of the common questions that's come up repeatedly is, well, if they thought that they could do it then, why can't you do it now? Well, it's the same answer. There's no ability to get sanitary sewer, to, sewer service to the property uh, in a reasonable and economic manner. So the next uh, slide, Morgan, if you will, uh, this isn't something that we've taken on lightly. We've been contemplating this for over three years. Our first meeting uh, with the town was in January of 2021. Uh, this is the timeline of those meetings. Uh, they were not acrimonious. Uh, the town and its staff and my staff uh, worked through many questions of how best to develop the property, 
what type of options that we've had. And we've come to the conclusion, I think, through much arduous uh, uh, investigation that there's no feasible way that you can bring sanitary sewer to the property. It's impossible. And I'm, I'm going to explain a couple of reasons why. Um, so I'm not going to go into every detail of that timeline, but you can see that it's not something that we've done in just a very short manner. We, we've been at this for three years to try to figure out if there is a solution to this. It has nothing to do with the fact that we don't want to be in Milliken. It has nothing to do with the fact that the town says we don't want you in Milliken. It has to do with the fact that the property can't be developed given Milliken's current availability to provide services to the property. The last uh, slide, and then I want to get into some specifics of the presentation, again, shows uh, the, the, the purple line that you see uh, all the way up to the homestead at Ashton property is how the property was annexed. So when it was annexed, there's, there was nothing on any side of the property. It was, it was an island. For some reason, the utility or the railroad right-of-way across all of that county property was annexed at the same time. I don't understand why. We went back to the property owners and, and inquired of them, and nobody's given us a, a reasonable explanation of how all of those county properties had this sliver of property running through it to annex this individual piece out in the county. So <clears throat> you may ask, well, if they can annex that piece of property, this sliver uh, on the railroad right of way, why can't we do the same to, to provide the right of way, uh, provide the sanitary sewer? Because it would be technically possible that we could bring a sanitary sewer line <coughs> from the property all the way down that railroad right of way. The problem is, and the, the major issue is, is we've met with every one of those individual property owners. In fact, we did it in conjunction with the town in a very, uh, uh, I thought, um, cooperative way, and it was made abundantly clear to us that under no circumstances would any of those property owners, and there's multiple of them, and we can bring those names, we're going to allow any type of annexation of their property for any type of sanitary sewer easement to travel from the lift station to the subject property. Uh, not a single one of them. In fact, uh, at the meeting, and, and I did not attend, so this is hearsay, uh, but Morgan Kidder was in attendance. Uh, the meeting immediately, not immediately, but very quickly devolved from how do we accomplish the sanitary sewer issue to one of what this surrounding property owners' issues are with regard to county roads, the town of Milliken as a whole, general services. I mean, everything, uh, many, many topics that had nothing to do with development of Ashton and the, the business dealings that we were trying to accomplish with the town. So it didn't, the, the meeting was very quick and very direct uh, from our standpoint, from my perspective, as to whether there was an opportunity to do that. That is the only place, the absolutely only way we could ever get sanitary sewer service. Now, mind you, that's even if capacity existed, because today capacity does not exist to accommodate development of that property in the sanitary sewer system. So <clears throat> that's the general background of why we end up, ended up here today. So I would like to address uh, a couple of things with regard to the staff presentation so that you have all the information to make proper findings and ask me questions as to why we're doing this. So, <clears throat> and, and I'll go into some further facts that are important to the town staff's analysis. One is our sincere opinion that there's no adverse effects on the town. This piece of property is removed, it's put placed back into the county, uh, the plat's vacated, uh, the metro district goes away, um, and what are the impacts? Is it something that's substantial to the town? And our opinion is no, and I'll get into some of the arguments that were made by the town staff to, to rebut them as to why. Uh, so. Again, there is no present ability by the town of Milliken to service this piece of property. We have no intent and never had an intent when we acquired the property to develop it on an estate lot standpoint with sanitary sewer, or excuse me, with uh, septic sewer systems. It's not feasible in the market right now. It's not financeable. It's not something that's uh, desired in the marketplace. 
quite frankly, it's not something that we do. And, and, and it, most importantly, on my side of the aisle, it's not profitable. It makes no economic sense to do that. Now, you may say, well, the town's willing to provide service. And I think they are. I, I believe that. But there's a difference between willing and ready and able. And the town is not ready, nor is it able to provide the sanitary sewer service. We cannot get a line from that piece of property down to the lift station. It does, there is no, there is no right of way. There is no easement. There is nothing that the town can force. There's nothing that I can force to provide that type of easement to build that line. I'd build it. We'd, we'd figure out how to do it in the Metro district. It costs about two, two and a half million bucks and that price is going up, but it, it can't be provided. There's no way to physically bring it from Ashton down to the sewer treatment plant just over here east of town. Uh, that goes without saying that the water treatment plant is at capacity today. So without, go ahead, Morgan. Yeah. The, the environmental, or not environmental, the intergovernmental agreement for treated water from the city of Greeley uh, is currently at or near capacity. And that would create another stop block for us. There would be additional further costs for overages over that current uh, allotment within that IGA that we've been told by town staff that we would be required to run the bear of that. Thank you for that clarification. So again, capacity, availability of a right of way, um, easements. Um, so for two, three years, we've been looking at this and trying to come up with solutions without anything that's become tenable. Um, now, with regard to the town comments, as far as the annexation, again, the town, this piece of property is almost three miles from the town core. I really don't believe that there's any impact to the town removing it from its service area uh, without, uh, without having any major impact uh, of significance to the, to the core town. As far as snow removal and those types of things, those are issues that can be worked out with Evans. It's not a written agreement as well. It's a, an agreement that, that can be uh, work through with the county, with the town, whatever happens as we move forward, which we don't have a, 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 a set plan as to what happens next as well. Um, Non-continuous roadways exist today. Uh, one of the arguments was that these rights of way already exist and that they would create disconnection between the town. That's not true. The disconnection already exists. The, the roadways are disconnected between the core of the town and this outlying property. Now, in the interim, there have been another piece of property that was annexed because they had contiguity, uh, or um, I, I think that that's the correct legal term, to our boundary. But that's not our responsibility. It's our understanding, and I don't know this to be a fact, that the annexed property adjacent to us was depending on connecting to the Flack Farm or the Ashton and Homestead subdivision to provide them service so that they could make the connection. I have no idea where they think that they would get sewer and water connections, none whatsoever. Uh, it's important to note here that from the first meeting in 2021, we were very clear with the town staff that we fully intended to vacate this plat and replat the property uh, to a more, what I would call, standard subdivision, certainly not a state lots that were going to require sanitary sewer service uh, from the subject municipality. Um, while it may be true that opportunity for more homes uh, in this area would be lost by the town of, of Milliken, the reality is it's not gonna happen without sanitary sewer service. So it's not, we get it if we keep it in the town, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen in the near term and certainly, uh, or in the long term, and certainly it's not gonna happen in the near term. It, it is not feasible to bring sanitary sewers over there. So you're not losing anything because you can't get it now. There was also a comment about tax services or tax sales or sales tax and commercial development. There's no commercial development on this property. Never been intended to, not planted now, not, we've never contemplated it. You'd never put commercial out in that neck of the woods. Uh, it's unfeasible. Again, the reality is that there's no sales tax loss because there's never any gonna be generated out there. And again, in finality, uh, this isn't something that, uh, this is the first time I've ever done it. I'm not accustomed to doing it. It has, again, nothing to do with Milliken as a town, it has nothing to do with the town staff. This isn't something that we want to be combative about. It's just something that we've got to come to the reality as a property owner, uh, whether or not 
this town, uh, that this piece of property can be reasonably developed given, given the current state and obviously the way that this process is, or the, the services have existed for the last two decades. And it, it just cannot be, uh, the service cannot be provided to, uh, as needed to develop the piece of property. So with that, before I uh, reserve time for any rebuttal, I'd like to uh, ask Mr. Ortelier or Mr. Holler if there's anything that you'd like to add that, that uh, gives context to uh, our argument. Uh, my name is David O'Leary. I'm with the law firm of uh, Spencer Fane in Denver, um, 1800 um, Broadway, uh, Suite 2100. Um, I'm legal counsel for the developer and would be, and legal counsel for the district as well. Uh, with regard to ability to finance as well, if we don't have the ability to serve, um, there's no public financing that would be available through the district. Um, the district itself uh, and the availability of service for this project, um, because of the nature of the distance from where we are, uh, the flagpole annexation would still be available to the adjacent property owner as well, along that same right of way that was flagpoled to our property. Um, but we don't have the present ability uh, to provide service or to obtain uh, taps from the town. We don't have capacity. Uh, we don't have water service. Um, you're at capacity for both water and sewer. So as far as being able to actually market and sell and develop that property, we don't have uh, ready, willing, and able, which would be the standard for us to be able to provide service. We do have alternatives that are available. We are outside of uh, the boundaries, all those county properties that we would need in order to get the access for the rights of way to um, both build the roadways um, between the town and uh, the property and to provide for any infrastructure for water and sewer lines are not available either. We have to go through county property. Uh, annexation statutes have changed. Uh, condemnation statutes have changed as well. Uh, so dominant eminent domain is not available. Uh, you have to get permission from the county uh, before we can uh, do any eminent domain. Um, that would be also something that the town would have to contemplate in order to get um, any service lines for water, sewer, or streets to that subdivision or anything adjacent to it. Um, we're available for questions. Or, uh, we've worked with um, Mr. Gould and his office on, um, you know, addressing the best way to, to get this done. Um, we'll, we can verify the legal description. What we had available to us was from the title commitment. Um, we can provide a survey and get the accurate legal description if there's a discrepancy. Um, so as far as being able to update the documents for any petition for annexation, um, it, we can amend those uh, documents and get a survey just like it was requested by town staff um, to help clarify that petition as well. Um, but we're available to answer any other questions. Just got one thing real quick. Um, I don't think it was in the meeting pack or the agenda, um, but under the annex, the disconnect statute, notice had to be provided to the county and to the district. Those notices were provided. Under the statute, if neither requests a meeting within 30 days, it's presumed under the statute that both the county and the district believe that uh, disconnect would not adversely affect them. And so since there has been no meeting request within the 30 days, that presumption is conclusive as to the county and the district. Could you please state your name, sir? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Jacob Hollers with Spencer Fain, same office. Thank you. So with that, Madam Mayor, I uh, would just reserve any time if there's uh, questions or rebuttal after uh, staff questions or comments or uh, town uh, trustee comments. But uh, at, th at this time, I'll answer any questions that anybody may have. Questions from the board, starting with Trustee Dean. I don't have any questions. Trustee Beckman. I don't have any questions. Trustee Meisner. If the... Uh, the annexation is approved. Do you plan to go to Evans? Uh, we don't have any immediate plans. We've had discussions with them, full disclosure, but they're also, uh, we're going to have to figure out how to uh, acquire sewer service uh, traveling to the east. Uh, there are availability, we believe, that is um, without having to condemn or go across county property, uh, but that would most likely be the idea 
we would also have discussions with the county whether it's feasible to develop a project like that within the county. But to do that within the county, uh, we would have to have some type of IGA with Evans to provide some type of water or Greeley water and sanitary sewer services. So we don't have an immediate plan. We've not made any applications, uh, but that would probably be something that we uh, seriously contemplate. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Lane. I've, I've got a glaring question here about this railroad bed that, well, that connects <coughs> our town to this property. Yeah, if you could bring that back up, uh, Morgan. Yes, sir, go ahead. It's an abandoned railroad bed, right? And it runs through many, many people's properties, or is it owned by the by a rail by a you know by a railroad? <coughs> yeah. So let let me bring it up. Make sure that we're we're talking about the same area. I'm sure we are. So yeah, that was it. <coughs> So you're talking about the, the purple stretch from the town court, the, from the town court to the property, correct. That was, that was a railroad right of way. Okay. And it, cross, it crosses all of those county properties. And in 2006, when the property was annexed, as part of the, the flat farm annexation, that strip of right of way was also annexed across all of those county properties. So that, that, right of way so it's not abandoned it's in the town and it's it's still owned that property is owned by those landowners it just has this right of way that was in the annexation so it cuts right across all those county properties we've approached those property owners and, and inquired whether it was possible then to grant a a necessary public utility easement to bring a sanitary sewer line down there and the answer was a resounding no or a railroad bed that no, that just cuts through everyone's property. Well, the railroad's gone, so so it 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 it, it it's just a natural part of those farms. Right. Okay. Go ahead, Morgan, if you have a comment. So those railroad right of ways across those individual properties uh, was negotiated by one of those property owners to be released by the Great Western Railroad sometime in the early to mid '70s, um, due to lack of line there, lack of use. Um, they were able to come to an agreement, so the railroad did relinquish the rights to that property back to the property owners. Simply, that legal description across those properties was used for this flagpole annexation because the legal line work was already produced. So the property owners didn't give, have to give permission? Yes, they did. Every one of those property owners signed off on the annexation petition. And again, we've inquired as to what the history was there. I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to make some assumptions. It may not be fair, but uh, what I'm, what we've assumed is that Doc Flack was, a, I mean, he was a long time um, resident of this area and, and, and most likely had very good relationships with his neighbors. And with his representation uh, along that line was able to negotiate with those property owners to consent to that small annexation across their property. There's nothing that we've found in our investigation that there was any transaction of money. Uh, we just have those signatures or the, the, the recorded. It, and interestingly enough, the signatures are not on the annexation plat. The signatures are on the petition, the annexation petition, which is odd in my opinion. But, but uh, you know, at one point in time before we located the annexation petition, uh, we were contemplating whether we had an annexation issue because the signatures aren't on the annexation map. Uh, but those predate us. And when was this meeting that you had with all the landowners? 20, well, I can give you the exact date. It was July 17th, 2023. Just last summer. I would like to hear from our staff just regarding that whole meeting, I, I guess. Sure. I mean, that's pretty important to what you're asking here. Yeah, and again, the, the, the idea there is without, without any of that permission, uh, as Mr. O'Leary indicated, we have no um, legal right to force that 
easement, nor am I really sure that I want to create that type of range war with a half a dozen good citizens of Weld County. That's the only question that I have. I'll, I'll yield back and let it, you know, come anyone else answer some questions here or ask questions. Okay, uh, Trustee Wakeman, any questions? Yes, thank you. Certainly appreciate your presentation tonight. Um, can you remind me when you acquired the property? 2016, ma'am. 2016, so, and you know, um, part of my concern would be that that's, uh, for as long as the property has been part of Milligan, um, I'm not sure why, if you acquired the property in 2016, why eight years later you're asking for a disconnect from the town. Sure, um, it's a fair question. Important to us sure. during that time. And um, um, I'm, just, I'm just wondering why it took eight years. Yeah, well, it wasn't, it wasn't eight, it was five because uh, we acquired it in 2016. Uh, we were still in a little bit of a market downturn. We acquired it from the bank in a foreclosure sale uh, at a, um, what I would call a, um, uh, I mean, the bank needed to move the property because it was being acquired. So it, it was an arm length transaction. Um, however, uh, we knew that the property had some significant service, avail service issues with regard to water and service availability. At that time, we knew that it required a replat. The market wasn't of the condition in 2016, 2017, 2018 to really uh, start contemplating a replat of the property. We inst started investigating in 2019 and 2020 uh, our ability to acquire and get the necessary services to replat the property and provide those services to that area. And then in 2021, we started the process that came formally to the town and said, what, what is it that we can do? How can we provide service to this? So um, the, the short answer is the market timing didn't justify moving forward with it. We knew it was in Milliken. I'm, I'm not going to, I mean, I, we knew it was annexed and platted. There was no mystery there. Uh, but certainly we had no idea at that time the significant uh, headwinds that we would face in, in providing the necessary sanitary sewer service to the property. And remember that that property was annexed in 2008 and sat dormant for uh, eight or nine years before it went bankrupt on a plat that is not really functionable with regard to septic sewer systems. I, I hope that answers your property. So, so we acquired in 2016, five years later, given certain market conditions, started making significant and serious inquiry with the town of Millicott on how best to, to uh, replat and, and develop the property. And, and again, I, I want to I, I be sincere. If, if I truly believe that there was a way to, pro to provide sanitary sewer, that's a significant issue here. Water's tough, but sanitary sewer, in my opinion, is impossible, especially with the capacity of the treatment plant right now and the IGA with Greeley. We wouldn't be here today. We'd be working with uh, Cheryl or Ms. Powell and the staff, but but we 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 haven't come up with any solutions, uh, and we've we've spent a significant amount of money to try to come up with that solution on our end, and, uh, and and I'm not throwing shade to the town staff. We have nobody's provided us from the town staff with any reasonable solutions as to how to accommodate that type of service. And again, willing, in our opinion, is dramatically different than ready and able. You've got to have all three. You can't just say we want to do it. You've got to be ready to do it. You got to, and, the, and it's got to be available. I'm talking service. I would just say that the timing has um, certainly impacted the town of Millick and it made this much more difficult for us to consider at this time. I believe Trustee Musner has an additional question. Yes, I do. Um, how wide is that five pole? I don't have that answer, Morgan. Across various different properties, it's anywhere from 100 to 150 feet wide. It, there are areas where there may have been equipment for railroad. I'm not sure that we're 150 feet wide, but the vast majority of it is 100 feet wide. 
but that uh, flagpole is annexed to Milliken. It is annexed, but it is just annexation into the town. There are no utility right away provided with that, just simply annexation. Okay, second question I have is, does that property have water? You mean raw water? I mean water. Um, For like irrigation? Farms have water yes. Of some sort. Yes, we, there is some water associated with that property. Yeah, GLIC. G -L -I -C. Do you know how many shares? I do not. I, I do. I just don't know it right off the top of my head. Seems to me, I'm not going to let, let you hold me to it. It's th three or four shares. Uh, Gary Wiedemann, for years, before we demoed the house, farmed it for us and, and, and may do it again, depending on where we move forward. But Gary's been farming it in the interim since uh, we acquired it under a, uh, a lease arrangement. And the last question I have, it looks like from the map that that uh, property is like three sections. Is that correct? No. What's the acreage, Morgan? It is 299 acres. Yeah, two, uh, just shy of 300 acres. Okay. So uh, uh, less than a half a section. So these are not sections on this? No, they're probably quarters. Quarters. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're okay. probably quarter sections. They're squares. And, and most of the plat is on the north half, as, as you, you, you may all be very, very familiar with the property. It, it falls off on a, on a bluff significantly on the south side, which really makes that piece of property almost undevelopable. Uh, the, the current map, the current plat, doesn't even contemplate any development on the, on the majority of the south side of the property. That's why we've got two legal descriptions, the platted piece and then part of that uh, quarter section to the south. Uh, questions from Mayor Pro Tem Early. I don't have any. Okay. All right, Mr. Buckendorf, a couple questions from me. Yes, so, ma'am. Uh, you're saying that the original property was estates designed to be on septic? That is correct. Uh, well, I'm a little confused. I'm looking at the Town of Millican Development Agreement under added agreement section A3. The homestead at Ashton was to, uh, let's see, constructed, the main line consists of a gravity, gravity trunk main to a location on the north side of the Big Thompson River and a lift station to the pump, the sewage under the river and west via a force main receiving location at the town of Millican. That doesn't sound like septic to me. No, and I would, I would concur there, but, but there was, there's no plan, there's no utility plan, there's no design so those are words that 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 can't be accomplished so again i didn't enter into that development agreement i don't discount those words whatsoever but nobody's been able to, on the town side and from an engineering standpoint been able to provide how that's accomplished where does that line go because in concept that's exactly what would happen there'd have to be a force main but you've got to have a you've got to have a utility easement to bring that line through those pieces of property, those can't, those pieces of property in the county to get it down to the, um, the treatment plant. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you state that our sewer plant is operating at capacity. Um, I take exception to that because that misleads our public that's here. It's operating at 78% and can handle another 800 homes. Well, that's not what we've been told by uh, town staff that we would have to be uh, participate in enhancement to the treatment facility based on our anticipated number of units that would replat. Re so I'm only echoing what we've been told by town staff. Okay, but I was going over <coughs> what you provided here in, in your memo in one of the meetings, you acknowledged that we said that we were only at 78%. Right, but, but based upon the, our proposed replatting of the property, mm -hmm. it was clearly told to us that that, that amount of, of additional homes would exceed the capacity, uh, whatever percentages, uh, that would require upgrade to the system. So 800 homes would take us to about 98% capacity and our sewer plant is in our five year capital improvements plan. Yeah, and again, it, 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 we're willing to participate in those discussions. So I, I'm not, I mean, you're, I think your facts are very accurate, mm -hmm. but again, how do we get the sewer to the plant? Okay, I think that's a different discussion than what we're having here today. I also wanna provide clarification on the sales tax. So. Milliken is a small town, limited in its geography. Uh, to the west, we're confined by uh, County Road 19.
going to Johnstown, 65 going to Evans, and of course County Road 54 going towards Greeley. So we have a limited development property. We will always be a small town. So every part of land is precious to us, including this area at 65th Avenue. Our contention about this and what really concerns us is our comprehensive plan has not changed in 10 years. And the area at the Highway 60 interchange out here is slated for business development. That would be our commercial income. If you were to de-annex, that creates a domino effect coming all the way down to that 60 interchange where we could lose potential income that would be very precious to us. As a matter of fact, in Evan's last comprehensive plan, their town planner who is no longer with them came all the way to the other side of Ranger, just on the other side of Nature's Herbs uh, in their growth plan. And we found that quite offensive and strenuously objected. That is how far Evans wants to come. Yeah. So, and I, no, we're not, we're not inclined to really want to allow uh, property to de-annex from the town of Millican. Well, let, let, let me just rebuff that. that I, I, I can greatly appreciate as the property owner the preciousness mm -hmm. of land, certainly. Mm -hmm. uh, we own the property. We can't get service to it. My only contention, Madam Mayor, was that this piece of property will not in any way, shape, or form generate commercial sales tax. That's all I said. I don't know what happens between this piece of property mm -hmm. and the town's core, but from the southern, the, it'd be the southwest corner to the town core, there's no property in between that's annexed. I can't control what our, your, our, our neighbors do and who annexes in between us, but I can't be held accountable for what the next property owner does with regard to how Millican wants to manage its sales tax. Zero sales tax, commercial sales tax will be generated off this property now and in the future. No, that was my only contention. Yeah, but the rooftops add to the potential for commercial development, and your property is less than two miles from that Highway 60 interchange. It, it's so 2.7 what... miles from the town core, but if but if you can't yeah. build the rooftops, if I can't provide sewer, then how is that going to generate any additional commercial activity? I think there's further discussion to be had on on the connectivity to the town on the sewer and the water. And 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 if there are if there are avenues then tell us what they are because here two four for the last three years we haven't been told any. I don't uh, I, I don't think that we're at the point where deionization is possible. Um, I think there's more discussion to be had. Does town staff want to add anything to this discussion? Mayor Austin, I, I do want to make one comment. There's been a lot of discussion about the ability to serve this property. And I want to highlight the fact that um, uh, the law in section 3112.119 of the Colorado Revised Statutes does provide a legal mechanism for a property owner to compel a disconnect. Now, while we might not want uh, to go that direction, uh, I will say that I don't believe staff has, has done a thorough uh, examination of the issue of ability to serve in preparation of this hearing because we're operating under a much more narrow and um, uh, deferential standard tonight. And we have tried to get this before the board as quickly as possible. So if the board was inclined to uh, uh, factor in ability to serve, I would probably request that the matter be continued uh, to allow staff time to address that issue. I'm not necessarily recommending that that's necessary, but I just want to highlight that issue. Thank you. And this is a public hearing, so I'm going to allow, I believe we have Mr. Wiest here today who would like to speak and any other uh, citizens. So, Mr. Wiest, would you like to address the board? Sure. Thank you. Well, my first question is both to the developers and city of Milligan. What happens to me? <laughs> the flag hole is gone. And I came down here in good faith, and I, I want to be part of Milligan. Mm -hmm. So I could say to the developer, can you leave a strip of land along your west side? I think you a flagpole again, right? Mm -hmm. Say two feet wide? <laughs> I don't know what it'd have to be. I guess you would maybe know. <laughs> Attorney, so I, I believe that the proposal uh, leaves in place a 30-foot wide strip along the west edge, 
uh, and this is subject to, if the board was uh, agreeable and, and inclined to approve the disconnect, then we would look at the legal description because we think there are some issues with it. But as proposed, uh, and Pepper has a drawing that she's put up there, you can see the, uh, ro the railroad right-of-way coming up, going to the northeast, and then yes. it hits a 30-foot wide piece of land that goes up to your property. The issue with that is whether roads, uh, can you even install a road there? According to Pepper, that does not meet standards for road development. But that would be the flagpole to me, though, or would that not be? Uh, it, it, since, since the property's already been annexed, I'm not sure flagpole is the right word, but it would be property still in Millican. Oh, okay, so I would be taken care of then. Well, well that's a different <laughs> question. <laughs> okay. We do, I, we, I think Pepper would agree that we see a, a severe problem with turning that into a road. Strip. It has it's to. Actually, on the west side of the section line, it's uh, not on property that's owned by petitioner. Okay. It's owned by uh, Carlson and his forward. Okay. Um, so this is not part of the disconnect, but everything east of this line would. Be well, I could ask the developer. Can you leave a uh, two-foot strip along your property, which would not affect your homes or selling homes and connect it from the railroad <laughs> up to my property in a sense up to 49 up to 49 yeah something to think about sure understood and the other thing let's see the uh you guys the developers are asking for water and sewer but what are you giving what would you give Millican? i don't i don't hear any like a big park or upgrade 65th Avenue to four lanes or put a circle in maybe a, a 49th and 65th. It seems like you're just asking. Not like I was asking for a uh, flagpole, but you don't seem to be giving much. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wiest. Are there other, <laughs> any other public comments on this matter? Okay. All right, at this time I'll close the public hearing. Are there any final comments from the board? Hearing none, I'll take a motion on the matter. Can you state the time, ma'am, just for the closing? Uh, sure. Uh, Mayor Austin, I'm going to make a request just so that we have an adequate record. I'd like to ask that you would poll the board members and ask them to give briefly uh, their position and their um, uh, reasons. And the reason is that the motion that's proposed is for me to take this offline and come back with a resolution drafted to reflect the deliberation. So I want to make sure that we've captured every trustee's view. Okay. Madam Mayor, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. May I interject one thing before that? Um, we would ask that the meeting do be continued so that we can submit a petition under 3112-119 because we do not believe the city can serve and on the same basis as every other customer. So we would like to supplement our petition to also ask for disconnection based on that basis. Mr. Gold? Uh, they certainly have the right to file that petition. And if the board wants to continue this, uh, that's, your, that's up to you. I don't think I, I'm, that's your call. All right. <clears throat> so I'll take a motion from the board whether you want to do a continuance or make a decision? Trustee Dean? Well, I'll, I will make a motion mm -hmm. to table this until the second meeting in March mm -hmm. in order to give them time to su supply a petition. Uh, just so that we're clear, that petition will go to the district court and, and the town will then have uh, the opportunity to respond to that petition. Uh, this will go to court. That's what, what it boils down to. Well, let me ask you, if, if we don't have a favorable response to them tonight, they're going to do that anyway? Is that my I, presumption? I can't answer that. Would you care to would you, respond? Would you like me to respond? Yes, please. Thanks, Madam Mayor. I, Again, I want to be clear. I'm not trying to uh, 
force an issue and uh, run over the town of Milliken. That's not what we're trying to do. I, we've been in the develop, I've been in the development business personally for 25 years. We're one of the largest developers in Northern Colorado. I was born here, I was raised here. When I mean here, I mean Greeley. Uh, I, I grew up hunting around here. M my point to that comment is, I'll listen to reasonable solutions. I'll contemplate what they are, but uh, we've, we've investigated this from an engineering standpoint ad nauseum for three years. And, and I think that we know what we're doing. We haven't come up with any reasonable answers. So if, if, the, if the town staff in the town has items that I will contemplate, we'll do that. So I'm not gonna knee jerk. If we, we may proceed with uh, a petition to keep the process moving under thir st uh, section 32, but I'm still, it doesn't mean that I can't talk to staff. It doesn't mean that we can't talk about certain resolutions, but I can't wait any longer without having a path forward. So I don't know, Mr. Dean, if that answers your question. I mean, I'm not gonna just shut down and go to court. Uh, oh. that, that, that doesn't serve, if, if there's a solution, I'll, I'll listen. Well, that's what it sounded like. I'm yeah. sorry, but that, yeah, if, if you don't grant us, we're going to court. I, well, that's, I, that's I what think, it sounded like to me. I'm sorry. I think what the yeah. statement was is that we, we recognize that we can compel it under a district court matter, mm -hmm. and um, but that still doesn't preclude discussing about potential uh, options and resolutions. Well, I, I withdraw my motion, but I will make some comments if I may, Mayor. Please comment. I, you know, I, and and I I understand your predicament. I do believe that it is not beneficial to the town to have you disconnect from the town. Uh, I, I look at Mr. Ruiz there, and it will impact him whether he stays in the town or not, not having you there. Uh, the, and the mayor's comments, I don't know if you clearly understood it, but uh, at some point, we'll f you will figure out how to have rooftops there. It will occur. It may take a little more effort and, and some work with some of the property owners, but I think it's doable. But that, that's beyond the f fact that it, to me, it's going to disserve the, city, the, the town if you, do, if you do disconnect. I feel like it's uh, going to hurt the town in the long run. Okay, any other final comments? Otherwise, I'll take a motion. I, I would just like to agree with Trustee Dean. Um, he said exactly what I was thinking. I understand what you're going through, but I don't, I'd like to hear more from, from the staff and see what we can do to work through the issues that what you're dealing with and maybe come to a resolution just give us a little bit of time because we really would like you as part of our town. So that's where I'm at. Yeah. Who's got a motion? Well, Do we I, need a time I, frame if we're tabling? We're not tabling. Or not? No, he withdrew the motion. I, I. I withdrew my motion, but I think if the motion that we need is for direction for the attorney to draft a, a resolution based on our his perception of our comments, is that? Yes. Yeah, and, yes. And at least two of us have indicated we would find, find it to be a, not in our best interest for them to disconnect. Right, I count three. Make that three of us. Four. So, so we're down to a motion. So I, I would make a motion to direct the attorney to direct to draft a resolution in line with the board's perspective that this disconnection is not in the best interest of the town. Okay. I would second that. Town clerk, please call for a vote. Trustee Wakeman? Yes. Trustee Beckman? Yes. Trustee Dean? Yes. Trustee Lane? Yes. Trustee Meisner? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich? Yes. Mayor Austin? Yes. 
Motion carries. Thank you. Matter is concluded. Madam Mayor, can we take a five minute recess? Uh, yes, we can take a five minute Thank recess. It's getting warm in here too. Yes. Yeah. We'll reconvene at uh, 7.45. Ready? Yes, ready. ready. Okay. All right, we'll convene back in session now. Action agenda item number B, a public hearing to consider resolution number 24-05, approving a conditional use permit for a drive through <coughs> restaurant in the MU-C-D district. Presenting is Pepper McClanahan, Community Development Director. The time is 7.47. I'm opening the public hearing. Good evening, Mayor and Trustees. As mentioned, the next item on the agenda is a public hearing to consider resolution number 2405, which is a conditional use permit for a drive through restaurant in the mixed use commercial downtown or MUCD district on lots 12 through 14, block 41, town of Millican. It's located on the northwest corner of Broad Street and North Irene <coughs> Avenue. Uh, there's a number of attachments in your packet, including a copy of the zoning district, uh, the application packet traffic memo, um, the conditional use permit standards, and the resolution. So the property is currently vacant, and uh, to, it, it, um, to the north is a single-family single residential. To the west is commercial uses, uh, a liquor store. To the south are also commercial uses, which are the public, basically, fire district and a park. To the east are commercial uses, which are restaurant and retail. Uh, the comprehensive plan designates the site for downtown commercial and business development. Notice was published in the Johnstown Breeze on January 18th, 2024, and mailed to property owners within 300 feet of the proposed development on the 19th of January. A sign was also posted on the site on January 22nd in compliance with the requirements of the Millican Municipal Code. Uh, currently, the property consists of three vacant platted lots that are total 8,925 square feet, located on the corner of Broad and Irene. <clears throat> Broad is a state highway and is under the jurisdiction of the Colorado Department of Transportation, and there is an access control plan in place which restricts additional approaches onto Broad Street. North Irene is platted with an 80-foot wide right-of-way, and the property is also bordered on the rear with a 20-foot wide alley. There is a steep decline down to the alley on this property. Based on the narrative provided by the applicant, access and circulation through the site will be determined through the site plan process. They are only proposing uh, approval of their use tonight. And they're proposing on their site plan to do one way in and one way out through the same access point off of North Irene. So at this point, they're not proposing to have another curb cut. The applicants are seeking first approval of the use and then following that, they will submit the actual site plan design and construction specifications through the site plan process. A traffic memo was provided with this application and is submitted. The memo was received by, uh, was reviewed by the town of Millican's streets director as well as the town engineer and was accepted without comment. The review criteria for conditional use permit are in your packet that they include for the audience benefit. Uh, that the conditional use is consistent with the intent and purpose and other uses of the zoning district in which it is proposed. The conditional use will satisfy all applicable provisions of the land use code and subdivision regulations unless a variance is being requested. <coughs> At this time, there is no variance being requested and it is currently platted. The conditional use will conform with or further the goals, policies, and strategies set forth in the comprehensive plan in the Millican Parks Open Space and Trails Master Plan. There are no trails proposed uh, in that plan for this area, and the comprehensive plan designates this area for mixed uses, <coughs> primarily commercial development. 
The conditional use will be adequately served with public utility services and facilities, water, sewer, electric. Most of these are available in the street and there may be some service lines existing on the property. <coughs> it will not impose an undue burden above and beyond those of the permitted uses of the district. The conditional use uh, will not substantially alter the basic <coughs> character of the district in which it is proposed or jeopardize the development or redevelopment potential of the district. The conditional use will result in efficient on and off-site traffic circulation, which will not have a significant adverse impact on the adjacent uses, or result in hazardous conditions for pedestrians or vehicles in or adjacent to the site. That will likely need to be determined by the uh, site plan. Potential negative impacts of a conditional use on neighborhoods that have to be mitigated through setbacks, architecture, screening, walls, landscaping, site arrangement, uh, or other methods through the site plan process, the, the applicant shall satisfy and address the following impacts. Traffic, activity level, light, noise, odor, building type, style, and scale, hours of operation, <coughs> dust, erosion control, and effect on neighborhood character. For referral comments, we did send out uh, two referral comments. We received a couple back. One was from the Colorado Department of Transportation. They're requesting an updated traffic memo when the site plan is submitted if this use is approved. Uh, site plan building construction plans and fire protection systems uh, details were requested at site plan from the Front Range Fire and Rescue District. Uh, clarification on the light poles and associated electrical wire that's currently on the property is being requested by Excel. And request for inclusion of restroom facilities uh, was a request of the Weld County Department of Public Health and Environment, which would be addressed through the town's building code. Proposed on the site is, uh, again, the site's approximately 9,000 square feet. Proposed on the site is a 250 square foot um, drive through coffee shop. Staff finds that the applicant's request is consistent with the Town of Millican's comprehensive land use plan and conditional use review criteria. Staff finds that the use with, conditionals, with conditions recommended below will be uh, compatible with surrounding land uses and meet the intent of the mixed use commercial downtown district. Staff recommends the following conditions of approval which are also found in your resolution. This conditional use shall only apply to drive through restaurants with approval of a site plan. A site plan must be approved prior to commencement of any use of the property. The site plan application shall comply with all requirements of the municipal code. Prior to commencement of the use, the applicant uh, must also submit any other required applications and obtain required permits, including but not limited to building permits, sign permits, business licenses, food service licenses, and inspections. These conditions of approval shall become part of the town's business license for the use. This conditional use shall be reviewed annually by the town staff and a report of compliance with the conditions of approval provided to the Planning Commission and the Board of Trustees. This conditional use may be revoked for non-compliance with the conditions of the approval and violation of it or violations of the term of the business license issued by the town pursuant to procedures in section 6-1-160. The Planning Commission conducted a public hearing last Wednesday on the 7th. One member of the public participated by Zoom and requested information about safety for school children, ensuring adequate vehicle stacking and parking. Uh, the applicant did address those concerns during the public hearing. After hearing testimony, the Planning Commission recommended approval to the Board of Trustees for the conditional use permit. And there's a couple of suggested motions in your packet, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. The applicant is uh, present to address you. Thank you. Okay, questions from the Board, starting with Trustee Wakeman. Um, I have no questions. <clears throat> Trustee Lane? I have no questions. Trustee Meisner? No, I have no questions. Trustee Beckman? I have no questions. Trustee Dean? No questions. Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich? I have no questions. Okay, one quick question, uh, Pepper. This property, you had mentioned that there is a slope off the back. 
<clears throat> of the property and it is somewhat raised. Will there be any drainage issues off of this property? That would be determined through the site plan and the drainage report or impact a drainage study or report, whichever one is required by our town engineer. Okay. So that will definitely need to be addressed on, on the physical design and um, post or pre-construction of the site. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, opening also, we have some public comments starting with Nicole Rodriguez. You like to speak? Do you? <laughs> Sorry, it's been a while since I've been here, so um, I'm going to read off my notes um, so that that way I don't lose focus and that um, I have everything written out appropriately. Uh, my name is Nicole Rodriguez, and due to my profession, I will provide my P.O. box, which is 523 Johnstown, Colorado 80534. Mayor, trustees, and town staff. I am aware the vote today is conditional use of the land and not how I personally feel about the drive through restaurant on Broad Street. I've had the opportunity to review Millican's Land Use Code 16-2-150, along with the Planning Commission and Board of Trustees packet over the past two weeks. First, I'd like to point out Section 16-6205 is noticed several times throughout Millican Land Use Code online. Um, section B in section 16.6360, conditional use. Um, this item is not um, available online um, to review, research, um, and be able to have a rebuttal. So I'm assuming, based on that, this is supposed to be section uh, 16.6210, submittal uh, requirements and review. Um, I printed out the um, index that's online available for citizens for review. Based on that, um, 16.6.2.10, item 5 notes, a plat, map, graphic of the site or proposed use depicting t uh, topography, building locations, parking, traffic, circulation, usable open space, landscaping, utilities, drainage features, and other information is needed to evaluate the proposal. I do not see a plat, mat, or graphic for the proposed site in 27 Planning Commission nor uh, the town board packet that was provided to you um, today for citizens to review other than a vague uh, project vicinity map provided within the traffic study. Um, after review of the application, many of you may know I'm a fraud examiner, so I'm looking at the facts, um, and therefore um, there are minor um, discrepancies such as Within the application, it communicates that the lot sizes are 9,775 square feet. However, the estimated size of the lots are 9, 000, excuse me, 8,925 square feet, which is, I know, only 850 square feet, but it's still a technicality. Um, the application and outline provided by the applicant communicates the drive-through only coffee shop that would give the community access to a service area does not that we do not have in its surrounding community. This is a partially false statement as Millican has a specialty coffee shop two and a half blocks from the proposed site, in addition, a restaurant a block away that serves breakfast and coffee. In the applicant submitted notes, um, the drive through only coffee shop with a 250 square foot building, and then later in the application communicates that the coffee shop is with donuts and bagels. The town identifies the coffee and donut shop as a drive through restaurant, so um, this brings me to land use code 163225 stacking requirements. Stacking, requir uh, stacking space requirements for a drive through restaurant is a minimum of eight cars from the order box. And the applicant has a window versus an order box. Without a site plan submitted, a lot size being developed, will the eight car minimum stacking requirement be met without local businesses, residents, and back up onto North Irene Avenue and Broad Street? Based on the applicant's outline, it appears the applicant is using coffee, coffee shop only drive through stacking requirements versus the restaurant stacking requirements. The traffic uh, report provided um, communicates the best in and out for the route for the restaurant is North Irene and conveys that parking is available on both sides of North Irene. The lots in question, I had walked them on a number of occasions, do not have an entrance that I've seen. It has sidewalks. Um, so therefore, the entrance on North Irene will reduce the current parking that's available for the uh, local businesses 
and their customers. Um, I don't see anything regarding accident reports, ticketing offenses, deaths located near the area that could possibly um, impact um, traffic that's there. And as the trustees and uh, mayor and town staff is aware, one of the biggest complaints that we have in the town of Middleton is not only our parking downtown, but it's also how fast traffic is going. Um, with the increased traffic due to the apartment complex that is soon to be here and the potential drive through, um, how do we ensure that our citizens are safe and that our fire department is able to respond to an emergency um, and is not hindered by stall traffic? I respectfully request a vote for no, for, for, excuse me, I respectfully request a no vote for resolution number 24-05 and request the application be returned to the uh, planning commission to ensure discrepancies outlined are addressed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next person on the list is Val Coulter. Oh, I, I, again, I agree with her on the irony issue. Ma'am, you have to go up to. We have North Irene. We have the trailer court next to it, too. We have children coming in from all areas there, and North Irene is not equipped to handle extra traffic there. Um, we need another light if we're going to do anything like that, and I don't see anything proposed by the board because there's no way to get across. My husband got hit by a car coming across the street, even with the little lights. People don't pay attention to that. And if they want to have a restaurant there, have a restaurant there, but not a drive through where it's going to cost a lot more traffic problems. I, that's what I worry about. I also worry about the litter that is accumulated with a drive through restaurant. Um, we already have enough PIGS in this town. We don't need to create any more. So that's, that's mainly what I want to talk about. Ma'am, could you state your name and address, please? My name is Val Coulter, and it's a P.O. Box 418. I live on North Harriet, though. Thank you. And I already know that, y you know, I, I, I know that we have a lot of traffic going through that area, but that's, that's, that's going to be dangerous, and I don't want to see it happen. That's my opinion. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Matthew Bronham. Hi. So I'm Matthew Branham. I live at uh, 35510 County Road 31, Eaton, Colorado. Um, I am the applicant asking for the, you know, the change of usage or the permit. Um, to address some of you guys' concerns, I understand where you're, you know, you're looking at traffic volume um, concerns with that. Um, the only prediction that, you know, me and my wife are looking at is that Millican's a small town. We live in a small town as well in Eaton. Um, we proposed, we kind of drove through here, looked at the area, generated kind of what, what would be an opportunity. And we see that Millican is, seems to be progressively growing, growing very quickly. Um, our, our perspective is, and as it was stated, there is a coffee shop down the street. Um, our proposed on this is not to come in and derive any uh, coffee shops or any other businesses to not have any functionality. Uh, we're looking at the fact of everywhere else that nowadays for people and the way the growth is, quick and easy is what a lot of people are looking for. It's kind of like fast food restaurants, McDonald's, stuff like that. You go in because you're in and out. It's quick and simple. It helps you get through your day, especially if you have a 30-minute lunch hour. You don't got much time to be sitting at a restaurant and uh, waiting. I mean, you, you're limited, especially if you have to get back to work. Um, as for as you guys are refraining as it to be in a restaurant, it's not. As it's stated for like bagels and all that, that is just like a snack or an option for somebody to get a bagel or something as a treat as if like if you go to Dunkin' Donuts and you buy a donut. We're not having a sit-down restaurant there and we're not trying to predict the, the uh, the availability is what we're trying to open is open it up to Millikens and the community. That why can't you guys have a drive-through coffee like Greeley and everybody else has, but not have to deal with like 
Starbucks and them coming in and taking half a block of everything out here and then manipulating all your businesses of your restaurants and everybody out here because they do provide a vast quantity of things that um, a lot of the people in this community provide as well. And we're not trying to take that away. We're trying to uplift and give you guys the opportunity that people come to Milliken. Yeah, the coffee shop we're trying to put in wants to put a stamp that have you ever been to that coffee shop in Milliken? Because it, it's great, you know. And then it opens the opportunity. People see the growth in Milliken here and maybe retirement or you got family that wants to get out of a, a big city environment. It opens the opportunity for you guys to have more growth because A, they have that opportunity here. B, it, it's something that they're used to. And the other portion is it's a small community that maybe they'll feel better comfortable in than in the big societies of things. Um, on the traffic venue, I do agree that, you know, probably right at the bang, it's going to be <coughs> probably sporadic and a little bit erratic. But the thing you got to ask yourself is, the intersections and stuff like that, everybody's adults, we do everything. I, we got to rely on the person and the fact that when somebody stops by to get a cup of coffee, they're going to be responsible when they enter that road. I mean, it's, it's no different than when you, you're teaching your kids to go out and learn and drive, that you expect them to learn and to make decisions that doesn't embark on people's livelihood. And that's what we're looking at. I'm not saying that the traffic's not going to be any different. Uh, we do, we have come down here ourselves and sat many a times, and there's a lot of heavy equipment, semi-traffic that goes through here. I do te technically see that. That's, But that growth is going to keep going just based off the, the way the environment in Weld County is. I mean, it just seems like the petroleum portion of things is a steady growth. So as you as a community and as myself, I mean, we have to learn to grow and adapt with it as well. Um, as for a light function there, I think uh, Pepper had stated last time that there is push buttons and stuff for the children and stuff to cross the streets. Um, we did state there, that, you know, in the early mornings, if it's something, if we need to, I myself, being the, I'd be one of the owners, would be, uh, need to be out there to help be the safety of the kids. Hey, we're down for that. We're not, we're from a small town as well, so we look at it as for the community. We want, we want safety and all that as well, but we also want you guys to have the opportunity to feel like, your town is just as special as Greeley as anybody else. I mean, you know, ask yourself, do you drive all the way to Greeley to get a Starbucks or whatever coffee there? We're trying to make it a convenience that you don't have to drive that far of a distance to have the pleasure to get a cup of coffee and go home and enjoy it or take yourself to work. Or, you know, because I know myself, I drive 45 minutes a day to my job and... I don't stop for coffee because I don't have time for it. It's, it's just not convenient. And I see a lot of the traffic going through here has to be people commuting to Loveland, Denver, or even Fort Collins, or possibly Brighton locations to go to work. And they utilize this path here as a, of a shortcut or a quick transition to get to that location. And they're in the same boat we are. I mean, if there's not a coffee shop or something that they enjoy that they can stop and get, they can't do it. I mean, and just like you guys in the community of Millican, why should you suffer not to be able to get a cup of coffee because Starbucks is five miles that way, but you got 15 minutes to, to spare, but everybody knows you go in the Loveland area or that area in that general area, it's 30 minutes to get through anything to get anything. So we're, we're just trying to uplift the, the community and give you the opportunity to feel that we've got options here. Um, we're not against trying to help out and do what you you know what needs to be done. Um, as for like the stopping the traffic, yeah, we understand that it's going to take some parking away from some of the local business. I think there's an ice cream shop right across the street from that location. We're not trying to pull that uh, public parking or anything away from them. Um, we're trying to help even boost that because you think about it. Mom, dad gets coffee, kids want ice cream. It might boost their opportunity because. You got two and one, you know, if the kids are being good that day, maybe mom's going to get them some ice cream. Um, and then on us, it's not just a coffee shop either. We're, we're promoting what it's called like it's a dirty soda. It's similar to what you do with uh, Sonic and all that. You can add flavoring stuff to your drink. So we're not trying to just adapt to the adult portion of uh, milk. And we're trying to adapt to the children too. I mean, they can come by there and get a, a soda pop with cherry added to it or something to that that, 
relates to them as well so the kids feel like it's something they're part of as well it's not just a one-sided street on that I mean that's what we're trying to promote that it's it's a community thing so everybody has an option to get something out of it and have some kind of an enjoyment um, and what got us on the dirty sodas is just there's a lot of other states that have that opportunity I don't see it here it's not even in Greeley the only place you can get that is Sonic um, they do add a lot of flavored beverages and so we're just trying to open the op opportunity maybe milk gonna be the first stamp that it explodes here and <clears throat> It puts you more on the map of people like you got to go by there and try that place out because it's awesome you know and then it gives the community the opportunity to be seen by more of the public instead of just personal community i mean it opens you guys up to maybe more uh, businesses to come out here and give you guys opportunities i know on the outside of johnstown there's a lot of growth going on out there um rumor does have it starbucks i think is going out there i don't know if that's a true fact but we're also saving you that. We don't want you to have to drive all the way to the interstate to get a coffee and then drive all the way back here to get home. We're just trying to accommodate the community in a sense that would help you out, but also make you guys feel like, hey, I got, I'm just as proud to get a cup of coffee in my hometown. Um, does anybody have any other questions, concerns that, you know, would come across? And ma'am, I understand what you're saying on the, the traffic. We can, you know, I'm pretty... Okay. Sure. Well, just a moment. We're going to let him finish speaking, and then we've got somebody else on the list as well. So okay. we'll come back to you again. Yeah. So, I mean, if there's anything else on that, like I say, we're, we want to address as much as we can. Pepper has helped us out a lot of bunch, and we've seen going through the process of trying to at least get the permit. Um, as for you asked for, like, the, the site plan design, we wanted to put that application in and do it all at once. Um, but we're not like that big company or anybody like that. We're just two individuals that have been working hard want to make a, a difference in a community so I don't want to put forth the large amount of money to provide a site plan if I can't get past the permit thing that is a big chunk of money to spend on an assumption of a yes or a no I mean our commitment here is if we get the approval to, with this permit to you know tonight we're going to apply for the site plan and then give the opportunity to see how it is and have them, the engineers that do it, set that design up to best accommodate the location, the, you know, the entrance and stuff like that to the ability of what that plot is. Um, we did think about the plot on the other side with the, that's larger, but we thought of the community and the people that live there in the, the trailer park there that that probably wouldn't be a nice thing to do on that area because they live in that community and it's not fair for them to have to deal with it so we chose the other side because it is commercial it does have businesses there so it it can have an impact on it but it's, it should be a less impact on that community because we're solely trying to utilize the irene um entrance as the main entrance not the alley or anything we're trying to utilize that in the best that we can so it doesn't basically uh impact but just that one area okay. i know it could be hard but i'm not an engineer so i have to leave that up to them to best do the best judgment for us um and hopefully it's a right fit but we can't get to that phase until the permit goes on and Correct. so the community can see what it's about okay Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, next person on the list is Beck Wallace. Is that B and K Wallace or Beck Wallace? So hey, I'm uh, Beck Wallace. I live at Mad Russian on Heidi Lane, but I also own O'Hare's Pub down the way. And I've seen many, many people, kids, people coming from the fire department, crossing the road there at the liquor store. It's a hazard. I've seen the fire chief stop and have to have Popo, you know, do their lights because people don't stop there. And to be honest, knowing the kids, the people that work at my business that have children that are coming, going, and walking across that street, 
I really agree with Val. I do not believe that this is a good fit because the traffic is going to be too much on our rate Irene going but you know, like that one road and there's residential down here and he's saying he doesn't want to get into the um, the, the, the other residential on the other side, it's the same. Whether it's a trailer park or a physical house with a concrete slab. So for me, it's not safe. Our road is completely too busy now as it is. And people cannot cross with the amount of crossings that we have. If you don't cross at a light, they're not stopping. And I've seen people have accidents at the 7-Eleven and these types of things. We can't have that on that side of town. It's already busy enough. So that's my opinion and why I'm here today. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Viv Runoko. Adame, and um, I'm sorry, uh, I've forgotten how to address you. Um, I'm a new Millican resident. I've been here for one year today. And um, there's a couple of things that I want to try and understand with this. And it's maybe something that Pepper might be able to explain. Is that I understand that with, um, with Broad Street being 60, a, a, a numbered uh, highway, that uh, under... Colorado Department of Transport, there should be some regulation, 601-1, um, is it regulates the highways and there's um, the permits that have to be got from them, uh, it's uh, 0137. Therefore, that, that's for the um, permit for any deviations, anything to do with the highway. And, they won't approve any because it's under an access control plan. Okay, so, so you can't enter from a private property onto 60. You can only do that from the existing streets. But these are for the permits for any sort of uh, changes to traffic flow, and um, like they expect to have like traffic studies done on the safety and the traffic, the amount of traffic that we get through here. And we've heard from certain residents already that it is difficult. Now, I walk a lot of the time, and I've used those flashing lights, and I've had, <laughs> on the number of occasions that I've used it, which I would say is about three or four times a month since I've been here in a year, um, only maybe a dozen times have both sides stopped when the lights have been on. I've nearly been hit twice, and I'm an adult. And I actually, one, on one occasion, one lorry driver got out of his car to yell at the other car because I was halfway across. So I'm concerned about that. But I'm concerned about the safety for the children. The other thing is, um, Well County, apparently, to the, according to the state patrol, is one of the top, top five states for accidents. They don't go the speed limit. They don't go 30 or under down here. I know because when I go 30 or under, I get flashed at. Um, and I'm trying to be a good new Millican citizen. Um, and there's also been another case. I understand about wanting to become a business and everything else. But you're from Eton. Why don't you do it in Eton? Why come to Millican when you could be supporting your own local yeah. um, environment and your own local... You know, your neighbours, your, all of your people there. Why you, you stood up here and you, you made a sound case yeah, okay. for you, us. You need to be asking the board. Sorry, okay, you're, you're but no, he okay. also asked if there was any questions. Yeah. I just want to put it out there. So I, I understand that this gentleman wants to do something for our town. But I question, why isn't he doing it for his town? And the other thing was, there was a case where having to get a variance for ingress and ingress in, in I can't pronounce it, sorry, English is my fifth language. I, um, there was a, a case that was denied for Dunkin' Donuts, believe it or not, because part of their, their, 
uh, drive-through application meant it would have to go onto a, a, a state highway. And that after the uh, board did a proper, um, what do you call it, uh, a study, they found it to be unsafe. And based on their own knowledge of the area being residents, they had the ability under this, under this uh, case to say no. Okay, let me provide a little clarification. They're not going to be entering and exiting off of 60. It's going to be off of Ivory. That's what they say. There's no site plan. Until we have a site plan, until we see the actual distances, so there's, from what I understand, there's no pavement there. There's no sidewalk. So how, how, how much is it going to go over? How, I don't understand. Without actually seeing something physically on paper and looking at the measurements and looking at how... Irene is going to be utilized both going in and coming out. Mm -hmm. How do we know? That's what he was trying to explain. So this is for the property use approval. Okay. The site plan will show all of that. That's a separate approval. So will there be another meeting then? Mm -hmm. Yes, there will be another meeting. Okay. Well, that would be that would be useful. Okay. But um, you know, I, I I know from being. Hmm, I know from, from walking across uh, Broad Street, State Highway 60, it is not safe for adults. Mayor, may I um, yes, please. make a comment, please? Yes. So the town has done a speed study. Yeah. And had um, from CDOT, so the Colorado Department of Transportation. The speed limit through Millican is going to go down to 25. When is that going to happen? As soon as they get the signs up. And when was the study done? Because that's interesting. The study was done last year. Okay, that's brilliant. Okay, yes. well, that's that's so very speed, nice to yes. know. You're right, because um, you know we had concerns. We've had concerns all the way down to Centennial Drive. Yes. And so what I asked for them to do is do it from where Highway 60 and uh, Two Rivers Parkway, yes. the signal light there, yeah. through Milliken. Yeah. And so. Um, since we don't meet the warrants at Centennial Drive yet for a signal light, um, what they did find is that the speed limit in town needs to go down to 25. That is really good news. So, that is yeah. really good news because even if somebody is distracted, at that point, the reaction may be enough to stop before hitting someone. Mm -hmm. So five miles per hour makes a difference. It does. So. That's the only then, comment I wanted to make. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Any further comment? No. no okay. I just. And then, Val, you wanted to come back up? Yeah. Here's the deal. Love this town. It's impossible now to get out over by here, over by here, and over by the town hall for people to turn left and most of the time to turn right. And in order to go left, you have to turn right, go around the block and come back and turn left. We use Irene for that. We use that road so that we can come around and get out of town because we can't get out the other way because there is no other way. Now, if there was a light, it might be a little easier, but I know that I don't even go that way. And I know my son has actually stopped people so that people can get across the street there. So I know that that's a way I have told the senior citizens to go so that they can get out of town because they can't get out over by, by, the, um, by the town hall. I tell them to go around and go around Irene because it's the only way to get out. It's really, really difficult. It's dangerous and it's hard to do. We need another light there if they're going to do something like that. Well, the, that's the, we can't control that. The town mm -hmm. um, because it's a state highway. Mm -hmm. I wish we could, um, but we can't. Well, that's and, what. And so, what it has to do is meet what CDOT calls their warrants, and and those warrants rely upon the uh, traffic study, the number of accidents that have occurred, whether they're accidents or even fatalities. So, um, the town is always looking at that. Um, <laughs> It, we're going to continue to get more traffic 
that's not going to go away and so the only thing that will do is hopefully up those warrants so we can get so they have to have more accidents in order to put a stop uh, line up there kind of, kind of what, what i say too i think yeah. that's just awful because that's the only way i can get out of my of my home to get anywhere I, I just, I, I also know that there's coffee places and stuff. We have 7-Eleven. We have uh, the other place up by the school. But, um, so, because we can't get a signal light, what they are doing is lowering the speed limit. So, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. It'll happen. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right, are there any further comments? Uh, sure, approach the podium, please. I just I want to make sure that I'm very clear is that I'm not opposed to your business coming in at this town at all. I, I welcome businesses to the town and a, a better place for what you're looking for is over by the burnout grill, Dollar General. Over here, I don't foresee that a safe place for your particular business, but I don't want you to think for an instant that I don't want your business here because I do. I, I, I think would be an asset to this uh, community. So I want to make that very clear. Okay. Uh, please approach the podium, state your name and address for the record. Thank you. My name is Douglas Breville. I live at 103 North Josephine, lot number 15. I walk up and down the street at least twice a day. I cross the street. One out of ten times, somebody will go behind me or go in front of me, and I have to stand there in the middle of the street. People do not do the speed limit. If we drop, if it gets dropped to 25, are we going to enforce it? Are we going to have a police presence out there? You know, that's all questions. And then uh, people will use that alley that goes between Irene and North Josephine there. If you put in that coffee shop, they'll use it to go in and out of it if they can. And the alley's not that big. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other final comments? All right. The time is 8.28. I'm closing the public hearing. Any further discussion from the board? Hearing none, I'll take a motion on the matter. Well, I move to approve resolution 24-05 with the conditions outlined by staff. I second that. Town Clerk, please call for a vote. Trustee Beckman? Yes. Trustee Dean? Yes. Trustee Lane? Yes. Trustee Meisner? Yes. Trustee Wakeman? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich? Yes. Mayor Austin? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, we moved a couple of items off of the consent agenda. We will do I'm going to recuse myself. You need to do the, you have one more item, ma'am, for the construction of the ADA ramps. On the action agenda. On the action agenda. <laughs> okay. Um, C. Sorry, I was going to jump in. Okay. Presenting is John Rabus. John Rabus. I'm looking for him. There you go. Presenting is John Rabus. Thank you. I don't know how I missed that. So this is the ADA replacement ramps? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <coughs> okay, Mr. Ravis, please proceed. Good evening, Mayor and Trustees. This project will consist of replacing 13 non-conforming ADA ramps. We received the Weld County CBDG grant on April 26th of 23 and the notice to proceed on November of 2023. The project deadline is March 1st of this year. If the project is approved, our contractor will start tomorrow morning and the project will be completed by next Friday, February 23rd. With this schedule, this allows for an extra week if we have any weather delays. Okay. Questions from the board, starting with Trustee Beckman. I have no questions, thank you. Trustee Dean. 
Uh, yeah, just uh, what uh, led you to the front range over essential? No, what was that? Your lowest bid was essential? Yes. What led you to recommend front range? Um, there was uh, two, two, two things there. Number one, we interviewed both contractors. Um, we interviewed both contractors, mm -hmm. and it was um, scored off based off of their answers. And um, Front Range Concrete um, had a better, better overall score result. Then number two, we also went through all the bid um, documents that we received, and we also had a special list of bid documents that we received from Weld County. And Essential Concrete did not have, they were missing one of, the, one of their bid items. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh. Um, Trustee Meisner? No questions, Your Honor. Oh, I've been elevated <laughs> to Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You said to Your Honor this earlier. <laughs> Didn't know. I'm going to get my black robe. <laughs> it's funny. Been Trustee Lane? No questions, Madam Mayor. Thank you. <laughs> Trustee Wakeman. Um, Mr. Ravis, is there a list of what uh, ramps will be replaced? What was that? There, is there a list of ramps that will be replaced? Um, yes. Yeah, so I did is. provide a map for you. We, okay. All right. And, and we're posting them on our website and Facebook page, too. Great. So we got a handful on Elm, then um, the rest of them will be along Forest. <clears throat> okay. And right. that will be on the north side of Forest. And coming here, here in July um, through our CAP grant, um, with that funding there, we'll be replacing um, the sidewalk and um, ADA ramps, basically from Alice up, up and around Middle School, continue down the south side of Forest, and um, circling around the elementary school. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, questions, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich? I don't have any questions. Okay, I don't have any either. It's pretty clear. Um, so at this point, I will take a motion on the matter. I move to authorize the mayor to sign a construction agreement with Front Range Concrete LLC for the replacement of 13 ADA ramps for. $140,733.30. I second. Town Clerk, please call for a vote. Trustee Dean? Yes. Trustee Lane? Yes. Trustee Meisner? Yes. Trustee Wakeman? Yes. Trustee Beckman? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich? Yes. Mayor Austin? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Now I'm going to recuse myself, turn the meeting over to Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich. The next item on the agenda is the resolution of appointing election judges since I'm running for re-election. That would be a conflict of interest. Are we ready? Yes, sir. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, next item is uh Consideration and adoption of resolution 24 3, a resolution appointing election judges. Terry Reinberger, Town Clerk. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich and Trustees. Tonight before you is resolution 24 03, appointing four election judges for our regular municipal election to be held on April 2nd. Um, these four judges have been helping the town for the last several years. We have two from Millican and two from Johnstown. Um, each judge is paid $100 per day, um, and then we also provide meals on the day of the election, um, all of which was in included in the 2024 budget item. Um, and I'm open to any questions. Any questions from anybody on the board? No questions. No. no. <laughs> that was easy. Okay, good motion. I move to adopt resolution number 24-03, a resolution for the town of Millican appointing election judges for the April 2, 2024 regular municipal election. I second it. Tie. Or is that jinx? Trustee Lane. Yes. Trustee Meisner. Yes. Trustee Wakeman. Yes. Trustee Beckman. Yes. 
Trustee Dean. Yes. And Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich. Yes. Motion carries. Her Honor. She's coming. <laughs> <Yeah>. Her Honor. <laughs> 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 Didn't you call her that during this work session, Wade? Yes, you yep. did. <laughs> You're all those followers. <laughs> I know, now it's funny. I thought it was funny then. <laughs> all right, next item on the agenda is consideration and adoption of resolution number 24-24, resolution authorizing donation to the after prom. Cheryl Powell, town administrator. Yes, thank you, Mary and trustees. Um, Last year, um, we were approached um, regarding uh, donating for the Roosevelt um, High School after prom party, um, and which the board supported. Um, so this year, they came back and, and they're requesting a donation donation for this year as well. Um, the the after prom party um, is to, an, an event um, for students to gather in a safe way. Um, so they're not out on the street, not driving around, um, we hope. Um, the after prom party will be held um, after the dance on April 20th, uh, and it will be held at the main event in Windsor, um, where the children will be able to enjoy bowling, laser tag, games, and just hanging out with their friends there in a safe environment. Um, this expense was not budgeted for this year. Um, I have left the amount blank if you so choose to do the donation. Um, they did provide a, a sheet of um, after prom business sponsors and, and, the, and different levels. And of course you can choose you know, whatever amount you deem appropriate for this event if you choose to donate. Okay, thank you. All right, discussion from the, uh, the board. Uh, starting with uh, Trustee Wakeman. Um, how much did we donate last year? A thousand dollars. Any other questions? Did you? Did I hear you say we did not budget anything? No, we did not. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, pretty. I, sh I was just going to say I'm pretty sure that we could save some money on some pens and pencils if we want to donate. Uh, <coughs> Trustee Lane. Well, looking at, at what the levels are, the gold levels, the highest is $2,000 or more. I heard $1,000 from, from someone. I heard $3,000, so maybe in the middle go, go to $2,000 and be a gold, a gold level sponsor is my suggestion. Okay. Trustee Meisner? <clears throat> well, considering that it benefits the youth of our community, I would be in favor of uh, the $2,000. How much? Two thousand. Okay. Uh, Trustee Beckman. I agree. Two thousand. Okay. Trustee Dean. That's fine with me. Okay. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich. Yeah, I agree. Okay. I agree with the two thousand. So, if we have somebody that wants to make a motion, I'll move to adopt resolution number uh, twenty. 420 or 2404, uh, a resolution of the town of Millican, Colorado, authorizing donation to the after school prom party for Roosevelt High School in the amount of $2,000. I second. Town Clerk, please call for a vote. Trustee Meisner? Yes. Trustee Wakeman? Yes. Trustee Beckman? Yes. Trustee Dean? Yes. Trustee Lane? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich? <coughs> yes. Mayor Austin? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are there any board reports that we need to discuss? I guess there are none. So can I, can can I, I just ask Chief okay. a question? Sure. Discussion is where we're at. Is Chief Garcia. Can I ask you a question, Chief? <laughs> sure. I'm not trying to be snarky, but are there a lot of people getting hit on Broad Street that I don't know about? No. Okay. <laughs> I was just wondering because it seemed like that was a major concern. No. 
Okay. Uh, the majority of our traffic accidents are just east of town. Right. On the neighborhood. You know, on Traders, Highway 60 up that way. Okay. That's where we have a lot of traffic accidents. Okay. I'm just wondering, not trying to be snarky or start no, anything. I just yeah. would like some actual information about that, if that was the case. I, I kind of hate to bring this up, but I'm going to. Um, I go through some towns, and the crosswalk <coughs> lights are really in your face. They're bright, and they really, they demand attention. It's like, you got to stop. Our lights seem to be a little bit on the small side. <coughs> and I've, um, I've almost driven through them. I've ignored them because they're not just... They're not as bright, and I don't know if, if there's something we can do about it. I know it's going to cost money, but I I think that we need a little bit brighter lights. That's just my opinion. And that's going to be, I think those were approved by CDOT. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you want, want to add anything, John. Yeah, we, um, we got the, you know, get some other options, look at, look at some other options, and get CDOT approval. I, I would like maybe them to look at that because I just, I mean, I, I was really excited to get them, but they're not, they're not as effective as I thought they'd be, and they definitely aren't nearly as bright and as, you know, in your face, mm -hmm. in my opinion. I sure think they do a lot better than nothing. Well, yeah. yeah. So they, I think it was yeah. a great in investment that we made. I think. They catch my attention. Yeah. Maybe we should have a police officer follow you through town. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, so, I didn't know if anyone else felt the way that I did. I thought this would be my opportunity just to bring it up. We can certainly look at different light styles. Um, there's not a problem doing that. And we can come back to you with any suggestions. Maybe that might not be as expensive as you think because they're already up there just to change the lights out and make them a little, nope. Well, anyway. No, no, we <laughs> wish we would see if, if only. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but we certainly, we certainly okay. can. I didn't want to go down a path. I just wanted to ask. I just yes. had not okay. heard that. So thank you, Chief. Thank you. All righty. Um, no further business from board members. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> We're out. I'd like to see.